Hello everyone, today I'm gonna talk about a book called Self-Managed Development Okay, chapter 1 is mostly about introduction like the author saying thank you for downloading or buying the book So we're gonna move on to chapter 2 when the interesting that actually happens Because in chapter 1 the, the author is like thank you for buying this book and stuff And, uh, and the, the author I'm really excited and stuff like that you, you may be asking yourself why would I read this book if I could do a million things besides that? But the questions you, you should ask yourself is, um, you, the, There's more questions you should ask yourself but Not only that Are you happy with what you have achieved in life and work so far? Are you, could you do better? Because some people they, they think they are There, there are many stages of people People they think their life is boring because they don't, they don't achieve many things. And some people they feel like they already achieved many things, but actually they achieve one or two things and then they count it as many. Do you want to do more? Of yeah, it, it because even if you're old, you still want to, uh, to do something fun. You you don't want to just lay around all day and and just sit and be boring. The cat came. See, even, even when we get old, we still need entertainment. See, you cannot entertain a human all the way. We always, we're always curious and go find adventure. That's why God don't let us go outside from. Don't don't let us go to space because He know we're not gonna and uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna be uh, fully entertained. So He let us question ourselves. And if, if 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 we know too much about this and that, what's the point of living anymore? If you're just gonna know everything, so we got don't let us know everything. I, I, I think that's like when when you come with a good thing, the bad thing always come. Is there something in life? Is there something in life you wanted to do but didn't get a chance to? Yeah, the, the like. Like I said, you 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 really want. Uh, for example, you really want to meet a celebrity, and they're having a talk and show show to show talk next to your house. But that day it rained, or your your mother asked you to go shopping, and and you beg your mom, but she think that the celebrity is not as big as you because you're afraid of your mom. You're afraid that she would say no. Are you crazy? See, you're afraid of your mom. You didn't shoot your shot. That's also the next thing. Is there a shot you didn't shoot? You didn't shoot your shot. You need to at least try. If you really want to meet the celebrity, it's, it's like missing a big opportunity. Okay, so we're gonna talk about what self-managed development is really is. Self-managed development is all about you taking responsibility for your future it teaches you how to prepare for them before it's too late but it's never too late because of responsibilities i'm going to talk about more about more about that uh, later so it's never too late you also might say i already have responsibilities but are but are you sure you're not going to have any more responsibilities like for example right now you're you're, you're an old man, you're a grandpa and then you're like, oh, I can sit back and let my son do all the work while I don't have any more responsibilities but what if your son got into a divorce and then and then he he need to go to work while you take care of his uh, child see, that, that's another responsibility you make and also you need you, 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 do you live with your son? Or do you live alone? If you live alone, that's also a responsibility. Responsibility to take. See that in life, there's n not enough. You you can never have enough of something. Like, can humans drink all the water? Really? No. See, I told you. Can human breathe all the air? See, th there is no limit to life. So moving on to chapter three, the 
managerial jigsaw. Organizing something is like a puzzle. If you miss one thing, your whole thing, your whole your whole organization get ruined. It's like building a house. If if one brick is removed and if it's important, it's okay. For example, it's like a a, a puzzle. See, for example, I have a puzzle right here. If I move, if I lost one in the corner, it's okay, because I can just take everything else out and then I. I can have a smaller puzzle, but if you lost one in the middle, that is also a hard one. It's like building a house. It's like if there's a pole right here and then you take it out, it will fall down. See, organization is like that. You need everything counts. Every you might say this is garbage, this is trash, but that trash also counts. Like without that trash, you won't contain your food. It's like buying something from the market and you throw it away, right? And you said, yeah, it's trash. Actually, it isn't trash. It's the one that couldn't, that carried your food all the way from the market here. So you should value it. You should like, you shouldn't say it's trash. It's it's actually useful. So you 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 can, you can say it's a it's a use it's a useful thing that happened. But it's also unuseful because it, uh, that plastic is made out of trees and stuff. It's some some. Okay, and like I said, there are important pieces of puzzles, right? Right in the middle, in, in the right middle. So before, so in, in, in your, in your, in your organization jigsaw, in your organization puzzle, there are four pieces of jigsaw, and those four effective are, are, are very, are, are effective rules. Those four are specialist, generalist, networker, and independent. So what does being effective in every role mean? Being a manager, you really need to have these four roles or, or you, you don't have to be a manager. In order to work or, or organize, or, or for example, you will play a big role in a company. You need to, we all have their roles. But if, if it's, like, it's like a customer, you go in. You go in there. Is it and then and then you always have that one favorite customer that always greets you nicely. But the bad thing is he's lazy. See, that is like a, a puzzle. You have specialists, but you don't have generalists. But some people they have all four. That's why they move to the t upper upper rank in the company. And the people with one of them or two of them say, "Hey, why don't I get get uh, promoted like that?" See, you need to have all four to understand it. So what does being effective in every role means? What does specialist, generalist, networker, and independent mean? Okay, so we're gonna start from specialist. Uh, a talent or special, or being special in something. Like, you need to be special in something in order to do something. Then, uh, then the boss would choose someone else. It's like when you go into an interview, so what is your weaknesses and strength? If you're good at computering, if you're good at uh, coding or technology, th they would make you the IT or something. If you're good at counting, they make you the, uh, the cash register or something like that. But if you don't have any talent, how are you going to do this? See, most people already have this. So, so that, that, that e even I have this. So, so, so what's the point of only having that? That's why most people, they have two instead of one. But having four is amazing. So general, so moving on to general list. You must have general, you must have general business knowledge to work in a multifunctional teams and hold their own discussion on many businesses. Uh, you might not know what that means, but uh, it means like you must have uh, you must have a good brain or so, or remember stuff. You need to have good knowledge and education to talk about something. And you you and, and if if you know more, you can talk with more more teams. Like okay, so this is the wood team. This is the metal team. I know both wood and metal and gold. See, I can talk with both of them. But if you only know one, that that also that that's like a piece of it's like. Like, right now I have four squares, right? 
and, and that one square, that one square uh, was divided into four. See, it's like different parts too. It's like a puzzle, a puzzle that, that like that jigsaw is a puzzle. See. Okay, so moving on to networker. So the ability to work in terms and not argue. Like some people when they work in, t eh, sorry, not work in terms, work in teams. Some people when they work in teams, they argue much because they feel like they know more, but we don't actually know that. Like, huh, these people doesn't have a college degree. I'm the best, you all listen to me, ho ho ho. See, but who knows, that person might actually have a talent for something, but they just don't have money to go to college or something. See, th that's when people argue, they, they, they feel like, especially when the boss only take one idea. But the thing is, like most people, they, they, they don't they don't use their brain much. They're like, it's like for example, okay, so your your idea is a two star, but his idea is a four star, and you work hard on your two star, and then you feel like you want the boss to take your two star idea, even though the boss keeps saying, dude, literally, it's a four star, it's really good, you can try better. But you don't want to because you work hard on it and you don't want to like ruin it and stuff. See, you, you follow your feelings too much. Feelings control your mind, control you. you. You get angry or something all of a sudden. And independent. Believing in yourself, believing in oneself. Organizing, being organized and being responsible in all aspects. Like an independent, it means many stuff. It means it's mean you believe in it. It doesn't mean like many stuff. I mean, independent. It's 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 something like most most uh, not depressed people have. Uh, most uh, positive people have. Like for example, uh, you see your neighbor. He's happy with his family and stuff. He's independent. He believes in himself. He has the courage to do something. He's not a coward like someone. See, see, see it's, it's like the opposite of depressing coward. You believe in yourself, you take your shot, you don't miss your shot, you, 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 you do your best at everything, you do your best. It, it, it's, well, it's like the opposite of being lazy, the opposite of being bad stuff, of doing like negative stuff. So moving on to chapter four, how to take notes. So uh, in my previous, previous, previous book, I already talked about taking notes. But I'm gonna talk about it again because the book is talking about it and you don't want someone to say that you're skipping a chapter again because I already ch skipped chapter one. Okay, taking notes. Taking notes, you can take notes in your head, in a piece of paper, in a chalkboard, or a whiteboard next to your house, anywhere you want. But most people, they take it on paper or in they put it, they take it on something or they remember in their head. But sometimes, they, they 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 remember it clearly clear, clearly but sometimes they don't they they, they only they, they don't remember it at all even though they take even though they repeat it equally as when they and chapter four is really short so don't blame me too much okay? they, they 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 repeat it equally they take notes they rewrote it equally but sometimes you remember this thing better than that thing actually it's because the situation you're in the best time to actually take notes is be is before you sleep. It's because at the end of the day you have nothing to do left and you're gonna delay it for tomorrow, see? So at night you can think of anything. And one more you if if you if you're not good at and one more when taking notes at night it enhance your memory because before you sleep that, that that's the thing you remember. So so you and you will remember in the morning. But if you feel like you won't remember, you can put a notebook beside your bed and you can just sit there and think about what happened today, what ideas I can do. And then you can write it down for tomorrow. But some people, they don't do that. They, they, um, they do it in their breaks. Like for example, right now you're working for a coffee shop and you have a business idea. But you don't know what you're gonna do yet, right? You you might not know. So so the thing you do is after you do your shifts, you you get tired. 